Well, good morning, Living Springs Community Church. What an amazing occasion this is. Your 50th year in existence, and it is actually worthy of celebration and making sure that we're together on that. For those of you who are a little bit longer in years, you will remember the old Elam chorus book and you'll remember that there was a chorus in there called This is the Year of Jubilee, when all the captives are set free. Come you blind, you halt you main, uh, shout for joy again for this is the year of jubilee and that's what today i want to speak about that the 50th year of your church it's the year of jubilee and we find the year of jubilee in leviticus chapter 25 and i just want to read a couple of verses from there from verse 8 with you get your bible with me read along with me and let's just read what the year of jubilee was all about reading from verse 8 it says this count off seven sabbath years seven times seven years so that the seventh sabbath years amount to a period of 49 years then have the trumpet sounded everywhere on the 10th day of the seventh month on the day of atonement and sound the trumpet throughout your land, the whole land. Remember that part. Consecrate the 50th year. And what do we do in the 50th year? And proclaim liberty throughout the land and all its inhabitants. It shall be a jubilee. For you, each one of you, to return to your family property, to your own clan. The 50th year shall be a jubilee that you do not sow and you do not reap what grows itself or, uh, or harvest the untended vines. For it is a jubilee and it is holy for you. Eat only what is directly from the fields. In the year of jubilee, everyone is to return to their own property. And there are lots of details that go on, but let's pick it up in verse 39 of Leviticus chapter 25. If any of your fellow Israelites become poor and sell themselves to you, do not make them worker slaves. They are to be treated only as hired workers or temporary residents amongst you. They are to work for you until the year of Jubilee. And then their slavery is ended. Then they and their children will be released and they will go back to their clans, to the properties of their ancestors. Jubilee was a year where we remember freedom is the big picture of our church, of our lives, of our ministry. It was a time to be called together and to say, Let's be who God intended us to be. And I want to say that to you, uh, New Springs Church. I, I really want to say to you that this year of Jubilee, this great celebration today, is a time for you to say, let's do this together. That's what verse 9 meant when it says, blow the trumpet through the whole land. It was a calling people together and we're deciding that we're all in this together. It was a time to call our attention and say, this is the part of our lives of who we are and what we do. That's what Jubilee is about. It was a time of reset and a time of reevaluation to what our lives and what our church is about. And we all need to do that. It's a time to remember the big picture. In verse 10, it says, proclaim liberty and freedom to everyone. And you will know, it's actually part of the theme scripture of our church. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17 says, now where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. In this 50th year of your church, and you may not have been here for 50 years, so I totally get that, but in this time of recognizing this milestone, your personal freedom needs a refresh. That maybe this is a weekend, and maybe this is the next week to say to the Lord, well, how free am I really, Lord? And 
Perhaps it's a time for us to also remember that our town is not free. And that yet, even though that we're enjoying the blessings of the Lord, that yet we have still many people in our town and this district to proclaim the year of freedom to the Lord. In fact, wasn't that Jesus' manifesto? That when he said that he has come to proclaim freedom for the prisoners. There were three basic freedoms in the year of Jubilee. Uh, there was rest for the land, there was return of property, and there was release of slaves. And it's these three elements that I want to just teach into about our mission as a church together. First of all, the rest for the land or the soil. It was a real look at, well, what is producing fruit amongst us? In verses 10 and 11, it says, In the 50th year shall be a jubilee for you. Do not sow and do not reap what grows of itself or is harvested from untended vines. In fact, it was uh, only the parts of the land that were kind of official that they were allowed to reap from. It was only in the proper fields that they were, uh, could have their harvest at this time. On a personal level, I wonder if it's time during this Jubilee time for you to say, have I been sidetracked into trying to get fruit from things that are not really going to produce fruit? Are you involved in the things that really you should be? Is this a time for you to ask yourself, have you let some things fill your ministry time that are not going to produce any fruit? That was what this Jubilee Reset was about. It was, it was about saying, look, all these raggedy bits, all these untended vines that you take your time over, let that go now and let's rest from ministry that isn't really producing fruit. As a church or as a person, perhaps it's time to trust some solid ministries, worship, fellowship, teaching, evangelism, social action, perhaps getting around some solid ministries and not just being busy for the sake of it. What ministries have you or do you need to give away? What is it that you need to say, that was good, but it's just now not fruitful? In a year of Jubilee, it's time to see where you're sowing and see what's really producing fruit. That was what the reset of Jubilee meant. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 and 2, Paul said this, This then is how you ought to regard us as servants of Christ, as those entrusted with the mysteries of God revealed. Now it is required that those who've been given a trust must prove themselves faithful. I wonder if it's time in Jubilee year for your church to ask yourself, are we being faithful with what God has given us? Or are we so distracted at this? Are we uh, going over there looking at that? Are we trying this and that? And actually we need to come together, pull together and say, let's just be faithful in the fruit bearing ministries that we need to have for right now. So the first idea of Jubilee is rest from random plowing, sowing and reaping. It's actually come to the center, come to solid ministries and only concentrate on them. Maybe it's time for you to rest and maybe it's time for you to let some things go and just make some things work that we can all enjoy. I'm going to leave that with you. The second idea of Jubilee was the return of property or the rightful inheritances that people had was returned 
back to them. They may have lost that inheritance through poverty. They once had some things and that was taken away from them through the circumstances or their own ill judgment. But for whatever reason, there were people in the year of Jubilee that had their property returned to them. On a personal level, can I ask you, have you lost what you always had promised to you in Christianity? Have you let the, the joy and the, the magnificent things that are promised in salvation somehow seep out of your life? Let me read you something from Colossians chapter 1 verse 12. It says this, and go, joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. You are qualified by God's uh, blood poured out on your life, that Jesus gave his life for you, so you are qualified. Many of us feel that there's kind of echelons or levels in Christianity that, and that we're on the outside, but I want to break that thought in your mind. You are qualified to be right in the center of God's will. And then it goes on in, first, in, in Colossians chapter 1, in verse 13 to, 13 to say this, For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of his Son, whom he loves. Let me just simply ask you a question. What have you lost that you need to rekindle? Perhaps you used to speak in tongues. Perhaps you just really used to uh, enjoy worship. Perhaps you used to always share your faith. What out of your rightful inheritance has been lost to you? Jubilee year is a time to get things back that actually were always a part of your spirituality. It's never too late to start again. Jubilee year, first of all, was rest from random harvest. It was the resting of the soil. And maybe there's a rest that you need to enter into. Jubilee year was this return of your rightful inheritances. And, and perhaps there's some things that you need to reclaim and rekindle. But thirdly, in Jubilee year, there was a restoration and the release of people from slavery. Verse 39, it says, if any of your fellow Israelites become poor and sell themselves to you, do not make them work as slaves. In a jubilee year, in a 50th year celebration, it's time to restore relationships and to have forgiveness. Do you know that the world should be able to look into the church and say, I wish we were like that. In fact, Jesus said, didn't he, that the love that we have for one another is by, by that is how they will know that we are his disciples. Ephesians chapter 4 tells us that uh, Paul says, as a prisoner of the Lord, therefore, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling that you've received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. And in that same chapter, verse 32 says, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving one another, just as in Christ, God forgave you. I wonder if it's time for a restoration of some relationships. I wonder if it's time for some people to be released from the slavery of being on the outside of our personal affections. I wonder if it's time for us to look across the church and say, am I in the right place with everybody? Galatians chapter 6 verse 1 says, Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. But watch yourselves because you may also be tempted. Hey, we're in a jubilee year. You're, you're celebrating 50 years as a church. And I know some of you haven't been there for 50 years. Some of you may have done. And, and God bless you, those who've been long-term faithful people in the church. But what I want to say to you is this. Is it time to make sure that all of our relationships are in a good place? in our fellowship, personally, 
Is it time to take a look at what enslaves us? In what way are we being enslaved by something? Is it time right now for you to say, God, I want to be free? Year of Jubilee is a proclamation of liberty. Is it time for you to say, Lord, let me be free? Is it time to go after the freedom of the lost people in our town? Is it time amongst ourselves to say we will be restored in our relationship. You see, Jubilee is not just an idea, it's a command. It wasn't a, hey, this would be a good idea, have a festival of the year of Jubilee and you'll have a party and, and it, it'll all be kind of nice. It was actually proclaim this through the land, do this, this is a command. So is it time for us to take seriously our personal freedom, and, and ask how much freedom are we actually offering to the people in our town. We offer freedom through unity. The unity of, of in our ministry is laying down our personal preferences. Is it time that we said, you know what, I'm going to rest from that. I'm going to rest from making that my agenda. But what I'm going to say is I'm just going to get in the mainstream of the church. When we offer uh, the freedom to our town that we have claimed our inheritance in God, that we are actually living in the fullness of what God is offering to us, the joy, the love, the peace. And we offer freedom by our fresh commitment to relationships. You know, Adam, uh, your pastor has made such a great start. And he has been such a blessing to you with his lovely wife and his lovely family. What a great start that you've made. You've welcomed them with open arms. And, and you have got behind them and, and some of the changes that he's brought in, you have ran with it. You have every reason to be optimistic and just wonderful in, in the future. And so this would be a time now of reset and restoration for you to begin to say, you know what? We can offer freedom through the unity of our ministry. We can offer freedom because we ourselves are being personally made free and claiming our inheritance. You can offer freedom through the fresh commitment to good relationships in the church. You know, the very famous uh, speech from Martin Luther King was, I have a dream. And he closed that speech with, let freedom ring. Let Jubilee come. Let the 50th year of your church be a time when you say, you know what, we're throwing off some shackles and we are going for it in God. Let's offer spiritual freedom to this town. Let's live in personal spiritual freedom. Let us as a church be free amongst ourselves, because that's the big picture. Let freedom ring. New Springs Community Church, it's just a privilege to share with you. God bless you, Adam and Ruth. We are so proud of all that you are doing. Let freedom ring. God bless you. Have a wonderful 50th year.